How you doing? My name is Fody Georgiatis, and I'm going to explain to you today how your life can get turned upside down in a New York minute. One minute you live in the dream, and the next minute you're thinking to yourself, what the hell do I do now? I woke up Monday morning at 6.30 to find out that my brokerage firm filed bankruptcy, and they were in a liquidation position. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to do. I immediately called another brokerage firm to transfer my account over, which I had securities in there and some living amount of cash. I was in an all-cash position, no margin, and I sat and I waited, and they contacted me back, and they told me that my ACAT form was rejected and that my account was frozen. What do you do in a situation like this when you have all your life put in one brokerage firm that's been around for a hundred years, called MF Global, started for Man Financial. How do you trust this system? How do you trust a system in 2011 where it was supposed to be made better with investor confidence and regulations put in place by our governments and our regulators? MF Global was leveraged 40 to 1 in 2011. In the years 2006 to 2008, Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns were leveraged 30 to 35 to 1 in the catastrophe of the United States of America, almost going into a Great Depression. For every dollar MF Global had, they borrowed 40 to go in on an all-in bet for Spain, Ireland, and Italy. But it gets worse. It wasn't the bet. It was the commingling of client funds when the bet went the wrong way. And the CEO, John Curzine, didn't see it that way. He saw that it was okay to use client funds and it was okay to co mingle in accounts. But I thought that the regulators had a system put in place where all accounts had to be kept segregated. And it didn't matter what the brokerage firm bet on. My money was my money and it was not supposed to go anywhere unless I was authorized and unless I gave authorization to move my money. Today I sit with $2,000 in my bank account. My stock account is frozen. I have no ways of capital. I've been in contact with CIPIC every day for them to tell me that maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, there's a process in place. They're there to help me and protect me. But again, that doesn't help me now. Yes, I understand that I am protected by an insurance policy, by CIPIC. And yes, I understand that I will see my money at one point in time. But how does that help my insurance check that's gonna bounce? How does that help my kids' preschool that's gonna bounce where I'll have to take them out of preschool? How do you do, how do you survive as a parent of three children, ages of six, three, and three, where you have no forms of capital, you're in a cash position at a brokerage firm, and they told you that your accounts are frozen? What do you do in a situation like this? Is there really investor confidence in our markets? Is there such a safe place to park your securities and park your cash? I once thought so. Today, if you ask me that question, I don't know. I don't feel that I am in a situation where I am no different than if someone came in my home and burglarized my house and took everything. How do I feel safe in that house again? How do I sleep in that house again? I feel violated. Yes, my money will come back at one point in time, like I said, but where do I go next? Where do I park my money? How do I know that one of the major banks are not going to put a padlock on the door and say, we're filing bankruptcy? Good luck. What do I do now? What John Corzine did is not fair. He shouldn't have been allowed to do such a thing. The regulators should have been on top of this. They should have been bells and whistles have gone off. They should have been radars, fireworks screaming, saying that there's something wrong here. But he was allowed to make that all-in bet, and it worked against him. And today I sit here thinking to myself, what am I going to do? I've been calling CIPIC nonstop. They tried to comfort me. They tried to tell me positive things, that they're trying to talk to the bankruptcy trustee and move counts over and do this and do that. They told me to go get a job at Starbucks, go mow lawns, do anything possible to to wait out the storm. But I ask you again, I was once living the dream. It was my money. I earned it. 
Why should I have to go mow lawns now? Because my account is frozen. Is this fair? Has this happened to you? What do you do in a situation? Who do you talk to? Is there a 1-800 number that says, what do I do? 1-800, what do I do? I don't know. I know that you have a snake, a cobra, called John Corzine, that today resigned and said he's not going to take his parachute money, his $8 million balloon policy in case that, you know, they fired him. And that he was, uh, I don't know, sorry for what happened. But he went and hired the highest paid white collar crime defense legal team and he has security around the clock following him around. What do you got to hide, John? What did you do wrong? Where's the $633 million that is missing from clients' funds? Because that's what's stopping them from transferring my account to another brokerage house so I can be made whole, so I can have access to my capital, my money, no margin, cash position. Yes, it's your fault. You're the cockroach, the big fat Wall Street pig that went all in with clients' funds. I'm a big boy, I understand. You made a bet. I get that. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But the way you bet was not fair. You went against the law and you commingled funds. And now you got the feds, the SEC, SIP. SIPIC, and other regulators working 24-7 in your firm, in MF Global, around the clock, around the weekends. And they still can't find where the money went. So why don't you be a man, pal, and sit down and explain yourself. Like a true leader, you were once the governor of New Jersey. You were once an ex goldman Sachs leader. And now you're nothing but a coward, a spineless coward with no face. How do you wake up in the morning and look at yourself? How do you do that? How do you sleep at night? How do you look at your kids? You spineless pig. How do you do that? Because I don't know how I'm going to look at mine. I have a ritual in my house. Every Saturday, I take my little boy, he's six years old, and I take him to Toys R Us. And I allow him to buy a toy for $20 if he was a good boy and he did his household chores. Well, guess what, pal? I can't buy him that toy this week because all my checks have bounced. Because I'm left in my account with two Gs because my life was in MF Global. My life was in your hands. And I didn't lose that money. I earned that money. I was sitting there parked in a firm that's been around for decades that you took down in a matter of seconds on an all-in bet that you chose to make and make a name for yourself. And make a name for yourself, you selfish cockroach. That's what you are. You're not worth the spit in my mouth that if I saw you down the street to spit in your face. You understand me? There's brokers that work for MF Global that lost everything. 401ks, stock options. I talk to them every day on the phone. They don't know what's going on. No one's telling them anything. Today you resign. You're the captain of the ship. You know, I come from a country called Greece, a big country with big shipping magnets. And there's a wise old tale that goes that when the captain of the ship makes a mistake and hits an iceberg, or something happens to that ship, he goes down with the crew. He dies in that ship with the crew. What you did, you cockroach, you took the last life preserver and saved your own ass and told everybody else, good luck, go figure it out. I'm going to get a defense team to save me. Well, let me tell you something, pal. This is not the only video. I'm going to keep on putting them up, and I'm going to gather people together at moneywood.com, and I'm going to socially network around and have everybody speak about you and give their opinions about you and give opinions about people like you because it's not right. We don't have investor confidence. We don't have a free market. I believe it's rape holds the bag. I want to know how many people in MF Global last week were privy to information and got their funds and their accounts moved over when they heard the rumors or maybe the whisper calls from Mr. You, Mr. Corzin. 
How many people did you call and tell them to move out? Jump ship with me. How many? You tell me. My name is Foley Georgiatis, and be on the lookout for my next video.